I saw an interesting paper the other day, and I thought you might be interested in hearing about it. Have you ever thought about the shape of your dog's head? Well, William Helton, a researcher from New Zealand did, and recently published a paper in Behavioral Processes to try to answer the question about whether head shape tells us anything about learning or intelligence in dogs. So there's two issues. The first thing we have to do is describe head shape. And you know that there is quite a wide variety of head shapes in dogs. There are extremes, like the sight hound. Think about a greyhound, where the head is very long, narrow, but not very wide. And there are the dogs that were bred for holding and grasping uh, and fighting, and like the Staffordshire Bull Terriers, the Pit Bulls, and those have a head that's nearly as wide as it is long. We have the pug-type dogs, in which the face has evolved to be very flattened, and they have a wider head than it is long. So there's quite a range of head shapes, and we can quantify these using something you can call the cranial index, it's simply a ratio of a measurement of the face across the head to the length of the head. Now, the second thing we need is to be able to quantify intelligence. We don't really have a lot of data on intelligence or learning ability in dogs, but we can go with something called trainability. We have a little bit better feel for trainability in different breeds of dogs, thanks to the work of Stanley Corin. And Dr. Corin basically went to obedience judges and asked obedience judges about their perceived trainability, their, per their perception of trainability. It's not really quantified, but having worked with a lot of dogs, uh, these judges have a pretty good idea about which breeds are more trainable, which breeds are less trainable. So now we can rank breeds, as he's done in his work for many years, we can rank breeds according to the trainability or their perceived trainability. Now, the last trick is simply to relate the cranial index, the shape of the head, whether long and skinny or quite wide, to these measures of perceived trainability. And what do we find? Well, what we found, basically, was that dogs that were more extreme in their head shape, either wider or narrower, tended to be perceived to be less trainable. That is, dogs in the middle, dogs with sort of a typical dog-shaped head, moderate or medium-sized kind of shaped head, were perceived to be more intelligent or more trainable. So what this suggests, perhaps, is that dogs that have been bred for very specialized purposes, bred for such specialties that the appearance is different, may have lost some aspect of trainability in their evolution they didn't need. That is, they're trained, they're designed, they were bred for very specific purposes. And dogs that were sort of are in between, that aren't really highly specialized physically, need a higher level of learning, a higher level of trainability to be able to get by uh, and, and perform everyday jobs. So. Uh, the, I hope you kind of enjoy this. I thought it was kind of a neat study. It was kind of intriguing to think about the shape of the dog's head, the evolution of dog breeds, and how this may have affected their trainability. Obviously, there's a couple of caveats. Obviously, we really need better quality data on trainability, not just perceived trainability, but actually quantified trainability, or even other measures of learning, like uh, uh, memory, uh, uh, how ability to learn on cognitive tasks, and we have, don't have that kind of information for many breeds. So we need better quality uh, intelligence tests for dogs. And the second that bias is possible in this study is it also may be a perceptual bias on the part of the obedience judges. And there's been a suggestion that um, dogs that look different must be different and must be different in other ways. So it's possible that there's just a perception that dogs that are extremes that look very different um, may be uh, less intelligent. So there's always the possibility of a perceptual bias. But I think it's an interesting study. It's something that's very interesting to think about. I hope you enjoy this little brief insight into one aspect of dog behavior. And thanks for watching.